So what are we doing? Uh, what do you mean, sir? <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. So we have a Honda Element and it is in for six new speakers and a new double din radio. We're getting rid of that thing there okay. and we're going to replace it with this guy. So he likes the Sony because it has that really big display and that super big volume button there. So he picked this. Then we're going to go ahead with some Kenwood six and a half for the back and some components up here in the front. Now these are pretty cool. We're going to talk about these in a couple minutes once we actually get to them. Uh, these are these are nice speakers. You guys always ask. These are a great midly priced, midly priced? Is that even a word? Probably not. Midly priced speaker. So we'll use it in a sentence. Here we go. Makes it real. Let's get to it. So what's cool about these speakers is in this car, he has the tweeter and the A-pillar and the mid-range on the door. So if this had a big external crossover network, one of those big boxes, well, we'd have to mount that somewhere in the car so that we could then run the output for the mid-range over to the door and then the output for the tweeter. So with these speakers, you don't have to do that. The crossover is built into the mid-range for the mid-range and the tweeter has these little guys right here. So all you have to do is connect these up to the tweeter and you're good to go. So that allows you to very simply install these in like a GM, a Ford, all the cars where the, the mid-range is here and the tweeter's on a totally different portion of the car. I mean, if you wanna install them in the door, that's up to you. But with these, you, you can retain the factory locations fairly easily. You don't have to do any extra funky wiring or anything like that. Now they do make two versions of the speaker. They make this one, which is the Kenwood version. And then if you'd like an upgrade from this guy here, they make the Exelon version of the same speaker. And they look very similar, but it's nice size magnet, beautiful rubber surround, polymica resin style cones. So it's a really nice speaker. Tweeters, they come as a fish eye mount. If you don't want that, the speaker will come out, and then there you go. You can have the tweeter by itself. And it comes with these guys right here. These are a little mounting pod. They give you a couple different options. And then of course the tweeter just kind of slides into place. And you break off whichever ones you don't need. Two different mounting options there. All right, well, that's these. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna pass these over to Fernando because he's gonna get started on that. In the speaker, we have a six and a half speaker, but the inside is like five and a quarter. Our speaker is not gonna fit for the terminal. We're gonna go and cut this part right here so the terminal can fit right in, and then we're gonna foam it and uh, connect it. Okay, so what we did, we cut the left side of the panel on this side, so actually the basket can sit right on it, and our terminal, it's free. We'll make sure to put the terminal on top so it doesn't rest in any metal and causes problems. All right, let's go and put some foam and screw it in. Now the question is which one is positive and which one is negative. So we're gonna go find out, grab your plug, now you can see on the back of the plug which one is positive. So in this case, the green black is positive and the green solid it's negative. You can also get a multimeter, grab one lead, put it on the other side, and there you go. And the rear speaker is the same of the front speaker. The good thing about this is the rear speakers we're going to put in here, they fit perfect. We don't have to cut nothing. What looks like a single din on top goes to a double din face then has this whole big thing of useless metal mounted right here. I mean, there's there's nothing here. Kind of weird. I wonder how they have this screwed together. You know what? We have some time. Let's go ahead and take this off and just see what it looks like. Wow. 
Check this out. This is it right here. So it is fully single din, and the only reason why they put this huge piece of metal on there is to cover this one little piece right here. That's almost silly. Now, what this means is that if you've got one of those cool BMWs, this is calling your name. So if you got like a 3 Series BMW where you have that cool AC box right here in the way, there you go. This is the guy right here. You could easily make a piece of plastic that goes over this and tightens this up. Maybe a nice L, but yeah, you definitely don't need this thing on here. Well, let's continue on with the install. There you go. Now you know. If I was to guess, the only reason why it's so big has to do with these screws here and the ability to mount it into a dash kit. I guess it's good and bad. I mean, in this case, it really doesn't matter. We're going to use the BHA 1721 harness. This is just your standard Honda harness. All right, so for this install, we're going to use the BK HONK 830 dash kit. Now, I will tell you this. This kit is no fun to build. So if you can find a different kit to use, by all means, go for it. This is a universal double din kit. It comes with all these funky pieces here, but it does fit. What we have to do is throw away the pocket because we're not going to need that. But now we have to remove all these that we're not going to use. We don't need the single din piece. We don't need the back brace. What we do need are these this and this. You can come into the owner's manual and it'll go ahead and tell you how to get the radio out of the dash and then how to assemble the dash kit. Check your gapping. That means it's time to get onto the wiring harness. Now, the Sony harness, believe it or not, is very similar in look and appearance to the Pioneer. It has this little L right here that the Pioneer has. Now, on the harness that plugs into the car, it has all the matching wires except this blue wire here. Now, the blue wire has become somewhat of a topic lately in, in the discussions of other videos. Like, what do you do with it? What is it? Do I need to hook it up? Well, this is a blue wire is an antenna wire. Now, Cars don't typically have power antennas anymore. You know, antennas go They don't have that, but what they do have is amplified antennas. And that they're, because cars have short antennas on them to make the cars look more appealing, they have to put a booster in there to increase the AM FM reception. What you want to do is take this and plug it into the main harness and see if there's something on the other side of this wire. So we'll do that real quick right now. And there is, there's actually a wire on the opposite side of it here. So what that's telling us is that this car has some form of an FM AM booster built into it. This doesn't have a blue wire on it. Like Pioneer, Kenwoods do, they don't always work depending on the model radio you have. To be safe, what I like to do is just connect the blue wire in with the red wire. If you have an actual power antenna that moves up and down, go ahead and connect it to the blue white wire if you need to. But a better option would be to put an actual toggle switch in so you can just turn it off because nowadays most people don't even listen to the radio so there's no reason to even have the antenna up. The red wire is the accessory and it just turns on and off with the key which is all we need that antenna booster to do. Now the reason why we don't like to hook it up to the blue white wire is because in some cars, Toyotas, Nissans, this wire can draw more amperage than the blue white wire actually will supply. It makes more sense to hook it up to the red wire which has more amperage output than the blue white. Now that we have that done, the only other thing that's unique about the Honda is it has two orange wires here. We can go over in the car and check those, see if there's either one on that. Now it is called a dimmer wire by name, but really what it is an illumination. And what it does is when you turn on the key, you turn on the lights, whichever wire supplies this with 12 volts, it's gonna cause the radio to dim. Now a lot of people ask, hey, when I roll my dash brighter and dimmer, my radio doesn't change. It's not made to do that. It's just made to see 12 volts and dim to its predetermined dim level. To find out which one of these is actually a dimmer as opposed to the parking light wire, we're gonna go ahead and go into the car with the digital multimeter and see which one does that. To so go ahead and plug the harness in, go ahead and set our meter to DC volts, which is the V with the line and the dots beneath it. We'll connect one end of our probe to ground and then we'll connect the other end of our probe to one of the wires and then we'll just go ahead and turn on the lights. This one does give us 12 volts, a solid 12 volts when we turn on the lights. Go ahead and turn them off. We'll go to the orange white wire. We'll go ahead and turn that on. And as you can see, it's a smaller amount of voltage. And that has to do with the variable dash lights. So in the dash, you can turn up and down the brightness on those lights. This is gonna be the wire that's gonna supply that. What we want to do is hook up to our orange wire. 
Now, some kits don't have an orange and an orange white wire. A lot of them just have orange or they just have orange white. Honda is unique and then it has both. At the end of the day, if you hook up to either one and you have the intensity on your dash turned up fairly high, it's gonna go ahead and dim the radio. All right, so now everything is pretty much straightforward from this point on. We have our eight speaker wires, whites, grays, purples, greens, and what that is, white is driver, front, Gray is passenger front, green is driver's rear, and purple is passenger rear. Yellow is constant 12 volts and or also called memory. Black is ground, we just talked about orange, and we just talked about red, so we're good. On the Sony plug, it has all the same colors. We're just gonna marriage these guys up. So our harness is all set and ready to go. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and get our Bluetooth mic installed, and while we're at it, we'll go ahead and pull off the A-pillar, take a look at that tweeter location, and figure out how we're gonna put some tweeters in this thing. So the first thing we want to do is get rid of this little riser that it has sticking up. Get it down to the flat surface. Next, what I'm thinking we'll do is we'll take this mount here and we'll make a piece of plastic that goes across here. We'll go ahead and remove these two sides here. We're not going to need those. We'll just do a mount like that. Then we'll put some foam on the front of this so that it couples with the actual panel. All right, so on this, it's telling us that the solid is the positive. So what we're gonna do is take some red heat shrink and go ahead and put it over one of the wires here, the solid. Now this guy is good to go. All right, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and set the radio up real quick. Go into general, go ahead and shut demo off, clock adjust. We'll set the time, we'll go into display so it matches the dash. We'll select source. All right, we're good. Now we gotta do is finish putting on this last piece of trim. This guy is done. And we're done. Yep. So let me explain what's going on. Today, I'm out in Tampa at an audio control training. So the rep firm that represents audio control flew out, a guy named, hope oh, no one locked the keys in the car, brought in Chris Bennett. Chris Bennett works for audio control. Now, the purpose of this training is to educate us on audio control products like the DM608, 810, and all the other fun stuff. So we're here today to hopefully learn some stuff that we don't know. Let's go have some fun. Hopefully, beautiful day. Hey everybody, so uh, my name's Chris Bennett and uh, I've been up at Audio Control for three years. We're gonna talk about two quick uh, base processors real quick, okay, that we have. One is the Epicenter, which is great. Or we'll talk about AccuBase first. Uh, AccuBase is awesome, we have a patent on it. Um, we'll go over it, I'll show it to you in the hands-on portion in the DSP and how easy it is to tune. This guy right here is an LC4800. I wanted to make the best sounding Class D amplifier available. It's 125 watts by four. So it's got power, like you said. Everybody, everybody here knows Chrysler's are a pain, right? F-150 is the number one swapped out, you know, vehicle, late model vehicle on the road by a long shot. The only thing that I'm worried about is that's a prototype. That's a prototype. I'm seeing that shit. Bring the action. We were just listening to that song. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Did you get your subscription to Tidal yet? Yeah, not yet. So, we just had a conversation. Um, he likes his center here, mm -hmm. and you like your center there. Because mm -hmm. I always set my centers up for here. I always set my and, and I was there was that big debate yeah. the other day, yeah. and I'm sitting there going, well, I've always set it up for here. And I'm like, no, you're crazy. It's got to be there. Yeah, we had that same fight. Yeah. That's because weird. he said, if you're sitting, yeah, it should be there. And I said, no, it should be there. Right. It should be the center of the couch, or the center of the of The, the stage, car. right. And I asked Mo from Iaska, who's the head judge for the world. Yeah. And he said, you can do it either way. 
Correct. And but but it's, but I'm a fan of the center here. And I and I don't dislike it. I just have always set it up for above the gauge cluster. Mm -hmm. And it was just funny because and and after that big argument because I'd always just done this. Mm -hmm. And then after that big argument, I was like, you know what? The next car we did, I set it up for there just to mm -hmm. to see. And I I still I still like it. You here. still like it there? I still like it there. I, I mean, to me, it, it, to me I, I like it there. I, I think I think the center gives you a more of a like you're somewhere. Like, like well, it's more concert. Like, it's like because a, yes. she would be here. She Correct. Wouldn't be there. She wouldn't be there, and you're yeah. you're sitting off stage. Yeah. And and his thought, and probably my thought, is that we always just sat in the middle of the room, so it always sounded like it was in front of you. Yeah. So therefore, it should be in front of you, even when you're in your car. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. It's just a little glimpse into what we did today at the Audio Control Training. Now, if you'd like to actually know more about Audio Control, you can check out their website at audiocontrol.com. Or check out the live chat we did Saturday, December 16th on YouTube, right here, where we talked with Chris Bennett. Some of you guys asked questions. So definitely check that out. It's a great supplement to this. So you guys can actually see some of the new products that we're introduced to. We talk about a lot of the cool new things that Audio Control has coming down the pipe. So definitely if you've watched this, go back and watch that. You guys have a great night. On to the next one. <laughs>